Yeah, just briefly, and thanks again. I mean, I, I think in, in some ways the uh, the questions are obvious. <laughs> the answers are maybe slightly more complicated, but your uh, presentation has been very comprehensive, and it supported the view put by others to this committee that the provision of secure housing is actually key in terms of penal policy going forward. But you have the precise contradiction that Jack referred to, that I'm sure it was always difficult to get accommodation for people, but at least you could do the roof over your head bit. The support bits might have been more problematic, but now, presumably, the roof over the head bit is even more stretched because of the housing crisis. And I'm wondering what sort of units are you getting or are the probation service getting upon people being released? I mean, is it being left to the voluntary organisations? What's the approach being taken by the local authorities? Because it's a very difficult one to see. I mean, like, do you prioritise or ring fence a few for people in prison? Well, then obviously the people who aren't in prison go, hang on a minute, do I have to go and commit a crime so I can actually get a house because I can't get one either? But at the same time, there is actually a societal reason for why, in some ways, people with, you know, drug and addiction and support problems should be not, you know, every, there should be a house for everybody, but there's, there's an economic argument even to say that supporting them is going to save society in the long run, uh, while obviously, uh, you know, not in any way saying you, know, you have to commit a crime to get a house. So uh, who's leading that? And, like, who should lead the interagency approach? Because it's the probation service who kind of interface that when somebody's getting released and where a lot of the planning can take place. And I'm aware of current examples where people have been released or are on the verge of being released into permanent accommodation where it can work well, but also problems on the other end. Like, would you have a suggestion for how that might be done? I mean, we all, obviously, the whole housing issue has to be sorted, but is there anything in particular we could do, or who should be leading that? I suppose that's my first question. The second thing, really, is in terms of the whole idea of prison breaking the cycle which is actually critical to the project that we have here. And I'd just like an example of, of a young fellow whose family have been in touch with us. A young man, Declan Barrett is his name. He's 25 years of age. He's a paranoid schizophrenic. Uh, he's serving a sentence in Castle Ray for assault. He got a, a three-year sentence. And him and certainly his family are desperate for him, for the prison experience to be used to get the supports. And we've written to the Director General, we've written to the Governor of that prison who's worked with, and they all agree he got two weeks in the Central Mental Hospital before, which wasn't nearly enough. They think by the time his turn will come up to even get in there, his sentence will be over and none of the problems will be addressed. And it just seems utter lunacy. This is coming up at all our meetings. The people who have diagnosed serious mental health problems, which has caused them to behave poorly, are not getting the support. And if we had any diversion of resources, even to the central mental hospital and dealing with that, we could save and reduce our prison population on that. It just seems utter madness and I'm just wondering on your experience in that regard and just the last thing is in terms of the, the gender specific uh, issue in prison which I, I think is key like and we have tried to pursue the minister with the questions about the, you know why there isn't an open prison for women why there isn't actually more the housing in the community options that takes place in Britain where you'd have a group of housing where somebody could have their kids there who sign in and all that it's much cheaper and better but it is, is I don't know is, is there anything we can do to advance that or any good projects that we could kind of push them on because I think it is actually very important and would have a huge impact on the female prison population if that issue was addressed, you know. Thank you. Deputy Daly.